take part in this debate. Just a few weeks ago, people around the world reflected on the 70th anniversary of the liberation of Auschwitz-Birkenau, one of the most notorious sites of the uniquely sadistic, brutal, and unspeakable atrocities perpetrated by the Nazis. They gathered together to recognize and honor the victims, survivors, and survivors of this horrific and inhuman period of history. I was honored to be among them to commemorate this most horrific of crimes. Auschwitz-Birkenau was originally intended as a large concentration camp primarily for members of Polish resistance and intelligentsia, and in 1941-42 was expanded for what Germans called the final solution, what meant extermination of Jews. Six million men and women, including three million children, were murdered during the Holocaust for the simple fact that they were Jewish. This was what anti-Semitism had led to in supposedly civilized Europe. It was a time of horrendous nightmares. As the world saw the end of the Second War nearing, the enormity of the Holocaust began to be exposed through efforts of people like Jan Karski. It is critical that we continue to reflect on history in the modern context. As our prime minister said, our memory of Holocaust and the suffering endured by its victims and their families, and a quote, helps keep strong the conviction in our hearts to do everything we can through our actions and our words to stand firm against the forces of intolerance and remain vigilant against genocide. Only through these continued efforts, we can ensure that such atrocities never happen again." End of quote. To put it simply, we must never forget. We must do all we can to prevent another genocide, another Shoah, from occurring. This is the kind of resolution we must make every day at, and at every opportunity. This is all the more critical at uh, a time when anti-Semitic incidents and Holocaust denial persist around the world. 70 years after the liberation of Nazi, German Nazi concentration and extermination camp, camp of Auschwitz-Birkenau, the members, observer countries, er, and permanent international partners of the International Holocaust Remembrance Alliance collectively reaffirmed our unqualified support for the Stockholm declaration of 15 years ago, and our commitment to remembering and honoring the victims of the Holocaust, to upholding its terrible truth, to standing up against those who would distort or deny it, and to combating anti-Semitism and racism in all it, uh, its forms. It is why we also partner with Nybrith Canada to invest in the National Task Force on Holocaust Research, Remembrance, and Education. The task force brings together scholars, legal experts, educators, Holocaust survivors, and community representatives to further Holocaust research and education in Canada. Mr. Chair, Canada is at the forefront of the international fight against anti-Semitism. We were the first country to announce its withdrawal from the tainted Durban process at the United Nations because we would not lend the good name of this country to a process supposedly to combat racism, which in fact promoted anti-Semitism. This is what parliamentarians from around the world declared here in Ottawa four years ago in developing the Ottawa Protocol as we hosted international interparliamentary coalition on combating anti-Semitism. Among its commitments, the protocol called for leaders of faith groups to combat all forms of hatred and discrimination, including anti-Semitism. It called on governments to establish an international task force to identify and monitor hate on internet, to record all hate crimes, including anti-Semitism, and to express a concern over anti-Semitism on campuses. The Holocaust was a crime against humanity unlike any other in human history and fundamentally altered how the world views and treats acts of genocide.
As more and more survivors can no longer share their stories, we have the moral obligation to teach future generations about the horrors of Shoah and to draw lessons from this dark chapter in history in order to prevent it from ever being repeated. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Questions and comments? The Honorable Government House Leader. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Speaker. Uh, I grew up in a community in York Mills and went to school with a lot of my colleagues who were the sons and daughters of uh, Holocaust survivors. I myself came from an Estonian background, and my family had seen waves of Soviet Nazi and then Soviet occupation before they fled. And many of those in the family who did not flee met a fate in Estonia, in uh, the Soviet Union under communists, including in their concentration camps, similar to that met by many of my friends, uh, relatives in the concentration camps of Nazi Germany and through their uh, empire at the time. And we grew up and we shared those experiences and I remember how poignant that was and how important it was to learn from it all and to recognize those horrors of the 20th century and to resolve never to let them ever happen again. And that's why to me it has been so unthinkable lately to hear things said that in my childhood, in my teen years, I never dreamed we would hear people say in Canada and elsewhere in the world. This rising tide of anti-Semitism is indeed very real. It is alarming and things are said that we've never heard before. And the reason a debate like this is so important, I think, uh, is that when I was growing up, those events of World War II, of learning the horrors of the concentration camps and the Holocaust, were really only 25 years old, a little bit older than that. And, uh, it was really fresh in people's minds and memories. And today we have to recognize that that is now quite some time ago. We're talking 70, 75 years ago that people were learning of these things. And that's why it's important for us to also remember uh, the horrors that can happen if we don't take an unremitting, uncompromising stand against the hatred of anti-Semitism and the associated horrors that can occur. And I know that my friend comes from a Polish background that also saw many of those horrors happen in that country itself. He referenced Auschwitz-Birkenau. And he, of course, in his own experience, has been uh, uh, very much affected by those tyrannical horrors of communism and fascism uh, that really tainted the 20th century as one that almost didn't have the worthy name of civilization that we would like to think we were in a modern sense. So I would like to hear from him his thoughts and his reflections on how that experience influenced us growing up and the changes that we've seen happening now and what lessons we should take from all of that. The Honourable Member for Mississauga East, Cooksville. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair, and I would like to thank the Minister for his question. Yes, uh, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, I was born and raised in Poland, uh, was born um, nine years after the war, not very far actually from Auschwitz, 120 kilometers more or less, and I remember visiting um, uh, Auschwitz when I was 12 years old more or less. I don't think I fully understood at that time the magnitude of what happened there. Growing up, I, I, I visited uh, it again several times, and you know what? The question I always ask myself, and I don't think that I will ever find it, the answer for it is, first of all, how people could do these things to other people? And the other question I always ask myself is, how was it possible that those terrible things, those atrocities were committed by the nation that was the most, if, if uh, one of the most or the most advanced na uh, nation in Europe. How was it possible that they used their science, their resources to build a place, industrial place, in order to kill and process other human beings? And we all know, or we should know, what we should learn from history and from this uh, what happened there is that propaganda of hatred, racism, can lead to unthinkable things as a result. Mm -hmm. And we should always remember this, and we should all teach our young generations of what can happen when 
we try to turn people against each other because they are different, because they pray different, they worship different, they look different. This is something that we should never let happen again in the future. Thank you, Mr.